Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and today we're going to discuss even more unusual discoveries coming from within the atmosphere of Earth's sister planet, Venus. The planet that despite being very very similar to planet Earth, seems to contain conditions extremely different from anything else in the solar system. But also the planet that's been continuously surprising scientists for many years now, with a lot of new unexpected discoveries coming out in just the last few years. And though I guess one of the bigger discoveries that was officially confirmed was actually in regards to volcanism, or basically that the surface of Venus seems to be still volcanically active, something that we're actually going to discuss in a few minutes because it kind of connects to the current discovery, but more interestingly, there's been a lot of additional observations of the Venusian atmosphere and a lot of new interest in this atmosphere because of the potential discovery of a molecule known as phosphine. A phosphor-based molecule that, at least on Earth, seems to be entirely produced by life, suggesting of course that this is a biosignature, which of course implied a potential detection of life in the Venusian atmosphere. But this detection in 2020 has been actually kind of controversial, with many scientists today believing that it was maybe misidentified detection of sulfur oxides. And so, as a result, in the last four years, additional new observations have been conducted in order to actually see what's happening here. And while at the moment it does look like there's maybe some phosphine in here, and its origins are currently unknown. But more importantly, this actually led to a new program, a new observational program, known as JCMT Venus. JCMT stands for James Clerk Maxwell Telescope. And it's essentially a long-term program whose goal is to discover what molecules hide inside Venusian atmosphere by continuously observing it with various telescopes. And though this telescope was able to detect phosphine at a frequency of about 267 GHz, over the last four years it made quite a few additional discoveries. And interestingly, pretty much most of these discoveries come from the so-called temperate zone. It's essentially a zone in the Venusian atmosphere, roughly around 50 km above the surface, where the temperature and pressure conditions are extremely similar to what we have on the surface of planet Earth. Now obviously as you come closer to the surface, things get hotter and a lot more pressurized, but in this temperate zone, the conditions are basically kind of Earth-like. Except for maybe one thing. There's a lot of sulfur here, and as a result, the conditions here are extremely acidic. And because of this, there's a lot of additional chemistry we still don't understand. Which was one of the explanations for that potential detection of phosphine. Maybe it's not really life, maybe it's some unknown chemistry from within this temperate zone. And so because phosphine is a biosignature, the main purpose for this observational mission is to find correlations and anti-correlations between phosphine molecules and possibly some other gas. Because by discovering if it's actually connected to some other gas, we can then start making a conclusion about where all of this is coming from and whether life is actually involved after all. But it's also important to remember that these are not the first claims for potential detection of life on Venus. One of the older claims was of the so-called UV absorbers, or basically unusual UV dark patches that seem to come and go in the Venusian atmosphere and have been explained as maybe some kind of a biological organism using UV light in order to maybe conduct some kind of an exotic photosynthesis. But in one of the recent videos, we've discussed a potential non-biological explanation, which actually does make a lot of sense. You can learn more about this in one of the videos in the description. And so, in a nutshell, every time signs of life are proposed on Venus, there seems to be always an explanation that does not need life at all. And so let's discuss some of these new discoveries from one of the recent studies and basically find out if life is possible on Venus and if it's actually showing signs of its existence or if, once again, there is a natural explanation. And so in this recent study, additional observations involved analysis and comparison of data from the Pioneer Venus Multiprobe that was launched in 1978 and was able to observe Venusian atmosphere for the first time, and of course some of the recent observations from the James Clerk Maxwell Telescope. And one of the first unusual discoveries coming from the Pioneer probe was once again compelling evidence for the potential presence of phosphine around 55 kilometers in the altitude. This was actually detected by using atmospheric probes, and so in this case the data was relatively accurate. 
And here, just like suggested by the initial study, phosphine seems to be present in parts per million, but specifically at altitudes of 55, 56, and 57 kilometers, which is once again part of that temperate zone. And this has been directly confirmed by looking at what's known as the width of the absorption line. Or in other words, at higher pressures, a typical molecule will most likely produce a much broader line compared to a molecule at higher altitudes. And that's exactly what's seen with the phosphine line in the radio data from the JCMT, which basically suggests a potential presence for this molecule at these very specific depths. But because these new observations were much more detailed, it also discovered a bunch of other stuff. Now things like sulfur dioxide and water were expected, but ammonia was not. And interestingly enough, hints of ammonia were also seen in that previous Pioneer mission, once again located somewhere inside the clouds, inside the temperate zone. And this could be a really big discovery, because ammonia on Earth, for the most part, is also produced by life. And the presence of ammonia somewhere in the atmosphere of a rocky planet has always been seen as a potential biosignature, especially if there is no active volcanism and there is no other potential significant source, which is for example the case for Mars. Now you can learn about Martian ammonia in one of the previous videos in the description, but here right now, for Venus, this is a really big deal. Although here I guess I have to briefly mention a side note. We obviously know that volcanoes are also a big source of ammonia as well. And up until recently, it was believed that Venus was inactive in terms of volcanism. And so here ammonia would be a huge discovery. However, by comparing recent observations from the Magellan craft that mapped Venusian surface between 1990 and 1992 with some of the more recent observations, researchers revealed that there are actually signs of active volcanism even right now. Researchers discovered fresh outflows of what seems to be molten rock and major changes near several different summits of known ancient volcanoes, for example, Maat Mons, naturally indicating recent eruptions and recent lava flows. And though additional explanations have been considered, here this was actually confirmed by using altimeter data that directly confirmed additional rock 3 to 20 centimeters deep near the surface of this volcano. And similar detections have been made near Sif Mons, another Venusian volcano, and Niobe Planitia. And so here, by using radar studies and by observing much stronger reads suggesting new rock formations, volcanic activity is basically the only current explanation. And so in that sense, maybe ammonia could be created by volcanoes. It does not have to be created by life. Which is why James Clerk Maxwell Telescope observations are actually focusing on trying to find correlations and various patterns. So basically here, if we actually see phosphine and ammonia increasing and decreasing at the same time, which might include other molecules such as for example water, this could imply some kind of a biological activity. However, if phosphine seems to be independent of ammonia, and more importantly if ammonia seems to be correlated with increases on the surface, this could suggest a result of a volcanic activity and not really life. And well, at the moment there is no direct answer, but the researchers have already discovered unusual variations of sulfur dioxide and water that seems to be guided by something, and nobody knows right now what. Now if this was Earth, it would be assumed to be some kind of a biological cycle. But on Venus it could be some kind of a exotic chemistry. And because here the pattern is not exactly clear yet, with certain molecules varying in terms of days, other molecules in terms of years, as it stands right now, all of these observations from Venus can still be explained without the existence of any life anywhere. But if microbial life exists in the Venusian clouds, it would present us with the easiest explanation for what's being observed. As a matter of fact, the scientists have already proposed that ammonia could be potentially used as a kind of a neutralizer for a lot of acidic droplets where all of this life could be thriving. And so basically, there's actually a way for all of this microbial life to survive inside tiny droplets of water and to essentially use ammonia in order to create conditions where all of this life could then thrive. But that's just one of the many propositions and one of the many potential explanations. At the moment, nobody actually knows what's going on and there's definitely something really strange happening here that needs to be investigated. Which is why NASA and ESA are going to be sending missions to Venus really soon and hopefully within the next 5 to 6 years we'll have our initial answers. But until then, 
Thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who was learning about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, support this channel Patreon by joining the channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow and as always, bye bye.